Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Smart Notebook to create a simple matching activity for use on the Smart Board in class. I'm going to use tables, text, and images from Google to create a matching activity for fruits and vegetables. You could use any topic you wanted. The number of pictures and the number of categories could be completely up to you. But for my purposes, I'm going to use fruits and vegetables, and I'll simply show you a very simple table that you make it as complex as you would like. So to begin with, I've opened up a Smart Notebook 11, untitled Smart Notebook. The first thing that I want to do is insert my table. So I'm going to come here to the Tools, and I'm going to click on Table. Now here is where I can make my table as big or as small as I want it to be. So I'm going to choose a very, very simple 2x2 two two table. Click here, and it inserts the table for me. Now I don't want it at the bottom of the screen, so I'm going to come down to the table. I'm going to click on it. This will give me one cell. Click again. I'll get the whole table selected. Then I can click with my mouse and drag. I'm going to drag the table up to the top of the page. I'm going to put it in the corner. Release the mouse. And then I'm going to choose my resizing tool and make it a little bit bigger. Looks good. Alright. I'll release the mouse. Now what I want to do is I want to make these bottom two cells a little bit bigger than the top. So I'm going to click in the bottom row, and I can come down here and choose the bottom row. I'll click and drag again, and this will bring the bottom row down to about here. At this point, I should mention that because I'm using a laptop and making a video, my screen appears to be much smaller than yours would be. It's also much smaller than the smart board is, so you would have a lot more space to do this on your computer in the classroom or on your smart, uh, smart board in class. Now what I want to do next is I want to put some text into the top two uh, cells to create my categories. So I click on the cell to highlight it. I'm going to use my keyboard and type the word fruit. Now I don't want it on the side so I'm going to come up to my text options and I'm going to center. I click in the next cell and I'll type the word vegetables. Click here, I'm going to center it again, and it looks good. Now what I need are my images. Now I have Google Images open already. I'll click down here and open it up. Now, when you're choosing images, I find it's best to click on the image you want because here on this screen, things tend to move around a little bit. I'm going to click on this apple. It's the one that I like. And it will take me to a much better copy of this apple. Now, I did forget to do one thing. So I'm going to go back to my notebook. And I need to open my screen capture tool. So up here at the top, in the tools, I'm going to choose the camera. I'll click on screen capture and this will open my screen capture box for me. Alright, here it is. It's ready to go. I should have done that before going to Google, but uh, it's okay. I usually like to use the square crop, but there are other options for you that you can use for choosing your images from uh, the internet or from other documents. Down below, you can choose to capture to a new page. If I select this, it will put each image onto a new page for me. But for the purposes of this activity, I want them all on the same page, so I'm going to deselect this. Now I'll return to Google Images, where I have the apple that I liked. I'm going to click on my crop tool, and with the mouse, I'll click and drag to highlight the image of the apple. Alright, I've got it there, and I'll release the mouse, and it will take the picture for me. Now you can see behind my Google window that it has been inserted into the notebook. Now I've had another tab open ready to go. This one is a carrot. Again, I clicked on the image from Google Images to get the better resolution and a more stable copy. I'll click here on my crop tool again. Click and drag. Select my area. You may notice the line looks a little strange. I find that if you just trust in the notebook, it will generally capture the image for you, whether you can see the line or not. So now I'm going to release my mouse. 
and I see my carrot appears in the notebook. Now again, I could carry on and get some broccoli, a banana, an orange, cucumber, whatever I want, but for the purposes of this video, I'll just take these two. So I'm done with my screen capture tool. I'm going to close that now, and I'm going to reduce or minimize my Google. Now here in my notebook, you see that I have my carrot and my apple, but they're far too big for the cells that I have for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the carrot, and I'm going to drag it over, I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to choose this uh, green circle, the rotating tool. I'll click and drag here, and I'll rotate the carrot to be the correct way. Now again, this carrot's still a little bit too big for me, so I'm going to choose my resizing tool and make it a little smaller. Very good. Now I'm going to move it over here and do the same with the apple. I'll click on the image. I'm going to resize it. Click again and drag. Uh, still a little too big. Resize, click and drag, and I'm happy. Now I just realized that I've put my apple under the fruit and my carrot under the vegetables. So I'm going to drag my apple to the other side, bring my carrot here to try and confuse myself. All right. Now, in the classroom, if I select a cell, I do have some options for the cell. I can split it or delete it, add some shades, check the properties. I'm happy with the way it is, so I'm going to leave that cell as is. If I click on a cell and then click again, I highlight the entire table. And up here I have another drop-down. This drop-down is useful in many ways, but for this activity I don't really need any of these options. Locking is one that you might consider, but if you do lock it, when the students place the fruit or the vegetable into the cell, you will be able to easily move them back out again. So I'm going to leave it unlocked to enable the students to move things around easily. Down below you can see a cloner, you can have links, sound can be added, I could say the word Apple into a webcam microphone and have it attached to this cell. They could touch a part of the screen, a little icon that would make it say the word. Uh, it's a little more complicated, but something to explore in your own time. Other things that I can do are available as well. I don't need any of this though, just so that you know it's there. I'm going to click on a white space to get out of there. Now, in the classroom, the students would be able to touch the screen select the carrot and drag it and then choose the box that they wanted to put it in. When they take their finger off the screen the carrot will nicely insert itself into the cell. Same thing here student touches the apple, can drag it, chooses the cell that they want and they can put it in. You can even adjust the size to fit the cell. Now when this student is finished you can again select that image and you can drag it back out. Now you never know what may happen in the class. A student may drag the image and put it in this cell as well. Now it's covered up the carrot, but don't worry. If I click on the apple and drag, you'll see that the carrot is gone. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on our best friend, Undo. I'll click again and I have my carrot back. So don't worry, it is a nice feature. Undo is here, you can use it. It will take you back to the steps that have just occurred. All right, now, once the student has placed the uh, fruit and vegetables into the correct cells, you can take this a step further and the students can then pick up the pen. I'm gonna select pen on the screen. Come over here, I'm gonna choose my pen type, just the regular pen. I can choose a color for the pen. I'll choose this. And then you could have the students write the name of the fruit beside it as well. You could also type a text box in here with caps or spaces in the word for them to fill in single letters if that's better. And you could also make a dotted line and write the word that way and have them trace it if you want it as well. But for this, uh, this activity, I'll just show it to you this way. Now, I did use a mouse to write that, so please excuse my handwriting. Now, once the student has written the words in and put the fruit into the right boxes, either for just the first step or for both steps, 
you can then take the pen you could choose a green you could come along and do a, a regular check mark or if you wanted to have a little more fun you could go back to the pen type choose the creative pen and then you could do your marking say for example smiley faces or stars or you could even go as far as to use flowers how you mark is up to you I find the red X isn't very positive in its reinforcement <laughs> so you can choose to do it the way that you want to do it. now that I've marked up the screen for the first student or for the first team or for the first pair of partners however you choose to do it I can then simply pick up the eraser and I can clean this all up. You'll notice too that as I'm erasing, the pictures won't be affected, nor will be the text. I can erase the flower and the smiley face and the star. Come back here and choose select. I call it the pointer. Take my fruit images back out again. If I had more, it would be easier to mix them up. If I had more categories as well. And then the next group or the next partners or the next student can uh, come and try the same thing again. So now it's your turn. Try inserting a table, type some text to make categories, go to Google Images, find yourself some images, use the screen capture tool to capture them in, size them to the size that you want, rotate them if you need to, and then have fun dragging and dropping. I hope you found this useful. Enjoy your smart notebook. Aha! I always forget. The last step. Come up here, choose File, Save As, and then you can choose where you want to save the file, and give it a name, and save it for future use. So I've given it a name. I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'll click Save here, and my notebook will be saved. Now I can take this out in the future. I can change it. I can use it as is, and I can use it as a template for other activities. Alright, I've saved it, I'm finished. Go ahead.